It's been said that James Watt, with his development of the steam engine, set the Industrial Revolution in motion. Henry Ford advanced the revolution to its second phase with his assembly line method of production. And some say that W. Edwards Deming created the third phase of the Industrial Revolution with a simple philosophy based on customer satisfaction, continuous quality improvement, and a focus on the people who make it work. The one stipulation that um, Dr. Deming had was that, in fact, I would be the one that would meet him, not someone down in the organization. And, and um, he explained that when we did get together. He explained that to me by explaining how disappointed he was in his inability to get the leaders in America back in the 40s and early 50s to understand the importance of putting quality as the number one uh, priority in, in your business. A manager is a leader, should be. He understands how he, his work, and the work of his people fit into the system for optimization of the system as the first job of a leader. To try to find, recognize that all people are different try to fit each one into what he can do best. But he takes joy in doing and help him to improve. He's coach and counsel, not judge. Judge people, you shut them, you shut them up, they don't talk. I asked Dr. Deming why he felt American workers had not been turning out quality products. How could they? All they ask is a chance to do a good job, to take pride in their job and to be proud of the company. That's all they ask for. Just hammering away as he does on the, the supreme importance of serving the customer uh, and then enriching the uh, definition of what we mean by a customer. It isn't just the ultimate customer, but every with, everyone with whom we work. The customer doesn't know what he wants. He makes a choice. He does not see his future needs. Customers' expectations are only what you and your competitor have led him to expect. He's a rapid learner, but he does not foresee what he might need. No customer asks for electric lights. No customer asks for photography. No customer asks for a telephone or for telegraph. The best definition of what this concept is all about is the continually and uh, never-ending effort by the leadership and everyone else in an organization to understand and meet and exceed the needs of customers. Anyone that has started to spend time with Dr. Deming and the basic ideas, uh, the importance of people, treating people, it's almost like the golden rule and some of the other things, cast in a business uh, context. Why, it, it, it just came through to me that uh, the principles were something I strongly uh, believed in and could easily uh, make uh, as my main uh, statement as far as what I wanted to stand for at the Ford Motor Company. Now, let me summarize all that into three pieces for a second. Peterson, whose book, by the way, A Better Idea, is, is a tremendous introduction and very helpful, but he, he's now retired. But Peterson describes in A Better Idea what he did at Ford and how he did it. I found it very helpful in understanding the development of quality across the board. So that, that's one. Two, but, but notice, Deming starts at the top. The President of the United States, the CEO of a corporation, the President of a university. If you don't have leadership, this is, this is not about all of us being equal. It's about an orderly process in which Everybody's equal before the law, but in your organization, you get somebody to be in. There is a wagon master in the wagon train. The wagon master makes decisions. There is a captain of the ship. So Deming would go to the wagon master or to the captain of the ship and say, would you like a quality wagon train? Would you like a quality ship? And then they've got to be involved. Second, notice the role of invention. It's back to answering your question. In that sense, who do we see last week who was decisive in creating uh, consumer awareness? Edison. <coughs> I mean, take the list of what Edison invented, most of which was not requested until it arrived. Think of the rise of the fax, or the microwave oven, or the cellular telephone. Third, 
Notice what Peterson's reference to the golden rule. In many ways, what Deming tries to do is codify healthy behavior and simply say to people, treat everybody else the way you wish you were treated. Get everybody involved in the system. Okay? Now, I was one of the reasons I got very excited about this and I was very interested in doing this is that for many years I represented Hapeville, which has a Ford plant which is, which is widely considered one of the best plants in the world. Uh, in many ways considered uh, equal to any plant. I think it ties one Toyota plant as, as one of the two best plants in the world. I watched it go through the transformation from the system it had been, which was the classic industrial system, to a participative system in which if people on the assembly line had a new idea, they would be flown to Detroit to meet directly with the engineers. And they would help redesign how the company built cars. And it was just, you could see the explosion of energy and the level of investment people were making in their own jobs as they got excited. So let's take just a minute to look at the Ford plant at Hapeville. The need for a change became evident when in 1979, Japanese car makers claimed a fifth of the American auto market. Ford was losing $96 every time it sold a car or truck in North America. Chrysler, near bankruptcy, was losing more than $600 a vehicle. Only General Motors was making money, more than $300 a sale. By 1988, Ford was earning $591 a vehicle. Chrysler was recovering, earning $288 a sale. But General Motors earnings had dropped to just $47 per car and truck sold in North America. A Harbor and Associates report ranks the Ford plant in Atlanta as the most efficient in the country, beating even the Japanese. It manufactures the Sable, named one of Car and Driver magazine's 10 best, as well as the Taurus, which is the number one selling American car, second only to the Honda Accord. The Harbor report credits Ford with cutting labor costs, retooling plants, and encouraging cooperation between labor and management. The Tor Sable was designed for ease of assembly. And it became that way because we were involved. I'm talking about the hourly workforce and this assembly plant was involved upstream with the design of that product. And we designed it so it would be easy to assemble. The key here in part is that people get integrated into the totality of what they're doing and are then liberated to improve their own contribution to getting it done. So there's this constant process of improvement in which everybody is a participant. Now, by definition, if I said to you, who's going to be smarter? A, a system in which 85,000 people all get up every morning saying, how do I improve my job? Or a system in which 84,500 people get up and say, I'll go do my job, and 500 to go around trying to invent something, which was the old system. The old system was, you do your job, we'll hire a consultant. The consultant will come in and listen to you. Then the consultant will tell me what they think they heard you say. Then I'll decide, although I don't do your job, how to improve your job. I'll tell the consultant who will then teach you. And isn't that exactly how it used to work? Okay. What Deming is doing is liberating everybody to improve their own performance in a context of understanding the larger system that they're part of. Now, it's very important to understand. Deming is not teaching a technique. I cannot drive this home too hard. Deming is teaching a way of being. You have to discipline yourself again. It's like learning how to cook. Let's say you got in the morning and said, I want, to, I want to boil eggs today, but I'm so sick and tired of putting water in the pot. Today, I'm just going to put the egg in the pot to heck with the water. I mean, that's literally what, that's how people manage. I really ought to do what Drucker says about keeping my schedule, but it's so hard, I don't have time today to figure out how I'm spending my time. What you think about it is about as dumb as not putting water in the pot. So learning new habits, learning new approaches, is a way of redisciplining yourself. But it's redisciplining yourself not into what I do on the job, but into a way of being. I think there are six core principles. This is my abstraction of 40 hours of Deming. So the first is that, and we're going to go back over these a couple times, the consumer, not the bureaucracy, defines value. The producer invents value. To improve future results, you must improve the process. People have intrinsic motivation. They want to do a good job. Every person, process, and system is part of an interdependent larger system. And continual learning is the basis for continual improvement. Now, we're going to come back to all six of these. But I want you to, to uh, first of all, understand the key part of this, which is thinking about the concept of what it is you are doing.
And where we went wrong, I think, was in the early 20s with a guy who was the leading uh, inventor of management techniques in the industrial era. Uh, Taylor, Taylorism was a term. Uh, Taylor studied what Ford did at General Motors, I mean at, at Ford Motor Company. And, and, and Ford sub-optimized things. He broke it down so you put on the wheel, he put on the bolt, you put on the tire. And so Taylorism was how do we break things down into very tiny bites. And the ultimate model was the pyramid. Okay? There's a problem with this. This is the person at the top. This person has power. This is the person on the assembly line. This person has no power. Who does this person report to? They report upward to a person who is their supervisor, who reports to the line manager, who reports to the plant manager, who reports to the regional vice president, who reports to the vice president of production, and so forth, right? 